summer 1964. Rimouski, Quebec, a city alive with tales and legends of the sea, remembers the sinking of the liner Empress of Ireland. On the dock, a team of underwater explorers prepares for the Empress expedition. She lay 165 feet down, four miles east of St. Luce, 12 miles from Rimouski. Underwater exploration at depths of more than 150 feet demands special degrees of excellence from divers. Water temperature never exceeds 34 degrees Fahrenheit. Total darkness prevails, and many other dangers are inherent in a long dive exposure or any emergency ascent. The St. Lawrence River creates many swift water currents in this area. The diver's descent will therefore follow a boy's cable anchored to the wreck during a previous dive. As red, pink, orange and yellow quickly disappear from the spectrum, the underwater scenery offers both man and camera a bleak monochromatic vision of a greenish-blue world. The color perception alters, that of form and structure far less so, and the wreck slowly unveils her rusted hull to the diver's eyes. And despite the slow encrusting of the sea, we discover the wreck's topsides, portholes and superstructures. Throughout the summer of 1964, members of the Empress of Ireland expedition became acquainted with the many different deep diving techniques. They were able to survey almost all the exterior of the impressive passenger ship. First results in films generated enthusiasm and excitement among the team, and plans were drawn for the next summer. Intensive research was undertaken so as to draw an even more precise profile of the Empress and improve the knowledge of the tragedy that occurred on that fatal night of the 29th of May, 1914. The Empress of Ireland of the Canadian Pacific Fleet was built in Scotland in 1906. At the time of the accident, she was under the command of Captain Kendall and manned by a crew of 420. With her 14,500 tons, the Empress was one of the most luxurious liners of her time. Run down around 1.30 on that foggy morning, the Empress of Ireland sank in less than 14 minutes. The Norwegian collier Storstad was under the orders of Captain Henderson. Of the 1,477 on board, 1,078 died. The death toll made the Empress tragedy second in history only to that of the Titanic. Search and recovery dies were undertaken as soon as 1914. Silver ingots, the safe and the registered mail that were on the Empress were all retrieved. During the summer of 1965, the Empress of Ireland expedition grew to such proportions that even its instigators were overwhelmed. During the 1965 expedition, many pieces were salvaged. All three Empress bells, the telegraph bases, the compass, the main helms wheel, pulleys, portholes, ladders, a ten-ton anchor, and still sparkling champagne bottles. All were brought back to the sunlight. At a time when all continents have been explored, when seas have been crossed in all directions, when the sky carries the sound of spaceships, the conquest of the underwater world is yet to come. In this perspective, the Empress of Ireland expedition, the most important of its kind ever put together in Quebec, is a success.